Hi everyone. Today we're going to talk about one last application of eddy currents, that is the detection and inspection of metal. So this is of course the principle of operation for devices like metal detectors. So eddy currents are able to detect the presence of metal or flaws in metal objects. So they're used in the operation of metal detectors, such as the one we can see here, and also in eddy current testing which is a way of testing metal for flaws. So metals are detected or analyzed based on the eddy currents that they produce. If we have a metal at all, then it will be able to produce an eddy current and we can pick up the eddy current that it produces. So how do we manage that, do you suppose? Well, in a metal detector, we run a current through a coil in the detector that varies at a constant rate. Right? So we have an alternating electric field, or alternating electric current, rather. Now this induces a changing magnetic field, which also varies back and forth at a constant rate. So now we have a changing magnetic field, and any metal object within this magnetic field will have eddy currents induced inside it. So the field is detected by a magnetometer, which is another coil in the metal detector. Usually these coils are right on top of each other. Right? So the changing magnetic field from the first coil produces a changing electric current in the second coil. So far so good. Now what happens if we introduce another piece of metal to the equation? When the changing magnetic field approaches a piece of metal, such as this little metal disc in the diagram, we get eddy currents producing the metal, represented by the little yellow circles. Right? Now, what these eddy currents do is they oppose the magnetic field. So the eddy currents create an opposing magnetic field, which will distort the magnetic field that's already there. And this means that the magnetic field will change shape just a little. There'll be a tiny little change all along the magnetic flux, all the way back to the coil that produced it, and the coil that's detecting it. Can you see what's going to happen? The larger pieces of metal uh, will experience greater currents, and so the changes that they produce in a magnetic field will be more obvious. Now the thing is, because we have that detecting coil on the uh, metal detector, when there's an eddy current passing through some unseen piece of metal, the magnetic field that the detecting coil is picking up will change. So the current through the detecting coil will change, but only slightly. So the magnetometer, which is what we call it in the metal detector, will detect the change in magnetic field that's caused by the eddy currents and a loudspeaker on the detector can alert the user of this change. We can of course also other, use different uh, sorts of uh, alerts to the user. We can have a blinking light, or we could have a meter that moves up and down. So metal detectors have many uses, as you might imagine. Some of these include screening aeroplane passages for weapons, searching for archaeological artifacts, ensuring processed food and textiles do not contain shards of machinery. You can imagine that this one might be rather useful. If a piece of food processing machinery breaks off and ends up in a bag or a box of food, we don't want it being sold to the general public. So a metal detector can pick this up and uh, prevent it from being sold. In the textile industry, the danger might be from lost or broken needles. Uh, eddy current testing is another way of detecting metal, or rather detecting different sorts of metal. Now we know that if we have a larger piece of metal, we'll get more eddy currents, right? So suppose we want a piece of metal to have a uniform thickness all the way through, so it's always exactly the same depth. We know that thicker metal will sustain greater eddy currents and produce a strong magnetic field. 
So if we have a specially made metal detector, we can measure the thickness of a piece of metal just by figuring out how many eddy currents it produces. Can you see where we're going with this? If we have one of these special metal detectors, then we can go through a big sheet of metal that's meant to be uniform thickness, and we can tell whether parts are too thick or too thin. If they're too thick, they'll produce greater eddy currents, and if they're too thin, they'll produce less eddy currents. In either case, we'll be able to pick up that change. So this is the end of the theory, and metal detection and metal inspection is one of the uh, last uses for eddy currents that we'll be learning about. Let's go on to some questions. Question 16. Which of the following is not a necessary component of a metal det detector? Is it a magnetometer, a coil to produce a magnetic field, a power source, or a speaker? Well, we, without a magnetometer, we can't detect any change in the magnetic field, right? If we can't detect change in the magnetic field, we can't uh, notice any eddy currents that are, being, that are being produced. So without a magnetometer, we cannot detect any changes in the magnetic field. Without a coil to produce a magnetic field, we can't even produce eddy currents in the first place. So uh, an, a metal detector without a coil to produce a magnetic field is useless. Remember that we can't really use permanent magnets either, because we need to create a constantly varying magnetic field. Without a power source, uh, we won't be able to produce the changing electric field, and we won't be able to notice the change. When the detecting coil, that is the magnetometer, uh, finds a small change in the magnetic field, it's very, very difficult to notice. So we need to amplify that change to make sure it's there at all. And of course, we need a power source for that. The last option then is a speaker. And this uh, is not needed for a metal detector, so it is the correct answer. The detector doesn't need to communicate its findings with the speaker. It can communicate them with a blinking light or maybe a needle on a dial. Question 17. Which buried treasure would not be discovered by a metal detector? A gold nugget, a porcelain box filled with pearls, a wooden chest filled with silver, or a diamond ring? So let's go through the options, shall we? It can't be a gold nugget. That would very easily be detected. It's a, a gold nugget is a piece of metal, and so it will produce eddy currents that will be very easily detectable by the metal detector. If we look at a diamond ring, then you might say, well, the diamond is an insulator, right? Well, the ring isn't. How about a wooden chest filled with silver? Would the wood perhaps block out the eddy currents in the magnetic field? Well, the answer is no. The wooden chest wouldn't block it out any more than soil would that's around the chest. So the silver will produce eddy currents in the magnetic field regardless of whether there is wood in the way. The last option then is B, a porcelain box filled with pearls. And this is the correct answer. Neither porcelain nor pearls are conductive materials, so no eddy currents will be produced, and this means that no magnetic fields will be uh, detected by the metal detector. Question 18. Name three applications of metal detectors. You should be able to do this pretty easily, right? One use is security screening. If someone's trying to hide a metal object on their person, then a metal detector can pick it up. Another use is archaeology, or treasure hunting, perhaps. If we're trying to dig up a piece of metal that's buried underneath the ground, we can use a metal detector to try and figure out where it's buried. And finally, ensuring product safety. Automated processing lines can sometimes get broken or uh, end up with pieces of metal in the produce that they're meant to be putting out. Putting a metal detector across these pieces of produce can ensure that they're safe and free of metal. 
Question 19. How is it possible to use eddy currents to distinguish between a thick piece of metal and a thin piece of metal? Well, remember, the thicker a piece of metal is, the more eddy currents can fit inside it, right? So a changing magnetic field will induce bigger eddy currents and more eddy currents in a thick piece of metal than in a thin piece of metal. The thicker piece of metal has less resistance. Remember that if we look at a resistor, the resistance is proportional to the length, but inversely proportional to the thickness. So the thicker the conductor, the less its resistance, and the greater the eddy currents. If a metal detector is placed over each piece of metal, it will detect a bigger change in magnetic field over the thicker piece of metal than over the thinner one. Question 20. Does the detection of a piece of metal with a metal detector affect the metal in any way? Justify your answer. Now let's think about this for a moment. What actually happens to the metal when we detect it? Well, there's a changing magnetic field that goes through it, but that probably won't magnetize it if it's flipping back and forth quickly enough. It will, however, produce eddy currents. So there is electricity flowing through the metal. Now, depending on what the metal does, the electricity might not affect it too much, but then the electricity turns into heat. So there is a small change in the metal. It heats up a bit. When a metal detector discovers a piece of metal and induces eddy currents in the metal, the electrical energy in the eddy currents is converted into heat energy by the resistance of a metal. Remember that no metal has no resistance, unless you get onto superconductors, but that's a different topic altogether. So when a metal detector detects metal, the metal will heat up, and it will also conduct an electric current. And if what you're detecting is a very, very sensitive electronic part, then this may cause damage to it. All right, so that's the end of the questions, which means that we've finished uh, the last uses of eddy currents that we'll be looking at. So we've learned about how we can detect metal by inducing eddy currents in it and then measuring the changes in magnetic field, and inspect metal by measuring how eddy currents change through various pieces of metal.